Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and it's rocket launch day again. Today, we've got a couple uh, different ones, I'll say. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, except not really. I've done the math, so I know this is going to work. One of you guys asked me, can you make a finless rocket? And I said, well, yes, technically you can. Why would you want to? You shouldn't. Because, well, it's somewhat unstable, or entirely unstable in roll. Pitch and yaw, provided you do your rocket calculations correctly, it should be just fine. And so, to prove my point that center of gravity and center of pressure need to be where I say they need to be, I've made a finless rocket. Now you notice this one's fairly long, and the reason for that is you've got this massive motor here in the tail. You need, obviously, an equal and slightly greater amount in the nose. Well, if you have a really short rocket, you don't have as long of a moment arm to provide that directional stability. So if you make a longer rocket, you need less weight up here. It still has to be more than what the motor weighs, but less than it would be otherwise. So this is going to be really cool, I think. I didn't even have launch lugs on this thing. No, I don't. And so, because I thought, oh, one of you is going to say, well, those launch lugs are acting as fins. Haha, -ha, gotcha. So we have to launch this thing actually out of a tube, bazooka style. And we're going to set that up here in just a second. But this is going to be really exciting. And so you'll finally see why the CG and the CP need to be where I say in the other videos. So if you don't know what that's all about, the CG must be directly ahead of the CP by one to two body lengths. If you need to know how to figure that out, go check out one of my other videos. But let's get this thing launching. Here we go. Alex, you ready? Okay. Well, now, before we fly it, I probably better show you how we built it. So I started off by making three body tubes wrapped around this mandrel here that I had left over from an old lamp. These were spiral wound, just scrap paper. I think this is four, these are four layers thick each. And you can see they're perfectly straight. So, next thing I did was just wrapped a bunch of paper around this motor so that I could make a motor mount. And now I'm wrapping this post-it around here so that I can draw a line around my motor mount to make a motor, a thinner motor mount. I mean, I don't need this entire tube. I just need a little sliver of it at each end of the motor. And so if I use this post-it here, I can draw a straight line all the way around, and then I can cut this off. Like so. Then very carefully, with the motor in there to provide some counter pressure, I just rotate this as I push down with my utility knife here and just slowly roll it around. With the final trim here from the inside, I can kind of get it like this. There we go. All right. So that's, that's a little bit ragged there. I'm going to have to smooth that out. But that is the bottom part of my motor mount. And so now I'll do a similar one for the top, but then I also need to stuff it with a stop piece that fits inside so that the motor obviously can't slide clear up in the rocket. But it'll go at the end of the rocket, something like this. There you go. All right. Oh, well, I'll get that on there. Okay. So that goes about like that. It won't be at the very end, but about there. And then I'll cut one more. And so now this strip here that I'm cutting is for the, the stop piece. I'll show you here in a second. I cut a lot of these and then wrapped them around this chapstick until I was able to build up the thickness of the inside of that motor mount that I just made. So I push this in here, I can expand it so that it fits inside like so. And these strips here will be the body tube couplers. And pull it out about like that. So now I'll mark it where I had it, and now I can glue it together back where that line meets that. So I'm going to have a bunch of glue stick on here like so, and then roll it back up, and then adjust it so that line meets. Tape it real quick. Put glue on the inside of my body tube, and then I can glue my spacer in. Push it in about halfway here, kind of like, well, I'm going to have to crinkle it to get it in there, but I can re-expand it. There, about like that. Give it a spin to smear the glue, and I'm good. Two more. Okay. And stick them together just like so. Well, rotating it while I push it together so that the glue gets evenly distributed. Now I gotta make sure it dries straight. Obviously, this desktop is straight, but I need to keep it straight in another dimension, so I'm gonna use the mandrel that I wound it on to hold it up against there. So I've got two 90s, that and this, and I'll roll it up like so, and then pin it together. Let's use uh, that and. I'll put the lid back on. Use that little glue stick to keep that from rolling. I don't need clamping pressure really, just I need to hold it in place. So that's why I'm not clamping anything. And then that tape right there. All right, now I'll let that dry. 
And so now I need to glue my motor mount in. Push this piece way up in there. It's got that real thin strip so that the, I'm pushing against that thin strip right now to set it. And then I'm gonna put this in there for just a second and let it, uh, basically this is going to align. I'm not gluing this piece in yet. I'm gonna put this in there, oh, if I can. It's still a little bit, get it over there. It'll be a lot easier once this is all in place. There we go. Get it in there and then stick it in the end. This will, because I obviously don't want my motor off center. So, and I'll just let it sit there while the forward motor mount dries. Okay. And while that dries, I'm gonna make an engine hook. I love bending paper clips. I almost never use them for their intended purpose. I saw a statistic once that says something like, well, all statistics lie, but something like 3% of all paper clips are used for their intended purpose. I love bending paper clips and turning them into stuff. So here I'm making an engine hook around like so. This one's not going to flex back and forth. It's just going to rotate out of the way. So I'm just going to clip it there. It doesn't need to be super long. And then I'm going to bend it back on itself just to kind of conceal this really sharp point here. Like so. Maybe a little more. Like I said, I love bending paper clips, making all sorts of stuff. You can solder them together too and do neat stuff with them. Put it right like that. But I need to cut a groove here in the outside of this motor mount so that this can sit in there. Otherwise, it'll, it won't fit between the motor mount and the body tube. It'll hook just like that. All right. So I've got my little groove cut, and I'm going to just put a little bit of glue here on the outside of this motor mount right over my engine hook because it's going to break free and rotate here anyway. I can just gently coax it up in there, right about like so. All right. That wasn't too bad. Now the nose cone, test fit. That's pretty good. I have to wrap maybe a little bit more tape around it here to get it to... Well, that's pretty good. So my total length's 52. So my center of gravity is right here, or my center of pressure, rather, is at 26. Now, remember, I need my CG to lead by two body tube lengths. And so... All right, I'm making a really simple square parachute here out of a trash bag. I'm just going to put, I think, one string on each corner. It's going to be real simple. I taped the strings on, looped a couple rubber bands together here, and then around my nose cone for a nice little shock cord. All right, that's nice and tight. Good there. Parachute there in the middle, and then this end here will get glued to the inside of the body tube. All right, so now to balance it. So I need my CG to be about here. You can see I've got my CP marks over there on the left. They're a quarter inch apart. One's the original, one's the quarter inch to account for the shape of the nose cone. But if I go two body widths forward, my CG needs to be there. My current CG is here. And so I've got a little ways to go, a couple inches forward. CG1, I'll call this here CG, that's hard to write on this thing, CG2. Okay, so I'm stuffing some clay down here in my nose cone. I hate adding weight, but like I mentioned for this project, I have to add weight because I can't put fins on the back. That would be illegal for this proof of concept. So I'm stuffing this in there a little at a time until I can get that, uh, until I can get the rocket to balance at that CG2 mark I just made. Just roll little snakes here and then shove them in with a pencil. Just doing a little at a time. Let's stick this in there and let's go ahead and test it before I put that next one in. That's pretty good. Like I still need probably one more loop of tape on that. Is it nose cone still a tad loose, I think. All right, so now where's my CG? Right about there. All right, well, so I'm a third of the way. All right, well, if that much got me a third, I know how much will get me all the way. All right, well, I got it all balanced here. I got my parachute folded up. I'll stick it here inside the body tube. I'll put recovery wadding in it just before we go fly, but that doesn't really weigh much. That's not going to affect my CG any. Stick that in there and try my new tape. Well, that's much tighter. I like that. That's good. That's not going to fly off. Now, one thing I need to point out, of course, is a colossal oops I made. Do not attempt to twirl test a really long slender rocket because when you apply a bunch of force here at the CG, it does this because it just, you, you can't do it. So don't attempt to twirl test a really long slender rocket. But let's get going. 
Alrighty, we're all set up. Finless is in the tube. Alex, you ready to fire? Yep. Count it down. Yep, we're good. We're in the sun. There it is. Of course it did. It bent on landing, didn't it? Yep. I don't think anything stepped on it, but no. it flew perfectly, didn't it? Just like it was supposed to. Yep. What all unexpected. That flew just like it was supposed to. Save that uh, empty engine. So we'll need it for balance later. Well, you can see it worked exactly as the math said it would. Now, when it did land, it landed a little hard and I guess folded in half right here in the middle. <laughs> right in the middle where between, between my two CG and CP marks. So that was in fact the middle. But you can see that a finless rocket will fly, provided you have your CG and your CP in the right place. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson. You know that guy. And thanks for watching. We really appreciate it.